Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and I am here today with set number 8918, Carapar from Bionicle. This is from 2007, the year of the Baraki and Toa Mary. Uh, there are 50 pieces in this set, ages 7 to 16, and this was originally for retail for $10. It's actually pretty cool at the time, but nowadays, let's see how it fares. Let's take a closer look at this set now, starting with the packaging. Now, as you notice with the packaging, I actually don't have the camera tilted sideways. These containers for the Baraki were made in a sideways function. And it was kind of misleading because it was hard to get the lid on and off. Which, by the way, the lid <laughs> is actually on the bottom this time. That didn't quite, you know, seemed a little bit different from our traditional canisters in a whole bunch of ways. It still got used to it, but it just seemed like a little thing to adjust to. It also seemed kind of weird that... Um, the sticker went over these two, but you kind of felt like you had to keep the sticker on here instead of trying to rip it off like other canisters. Sometimes it would rip off where the lid and the rest of the canister meet. This, I somehow got to, you know, keep it in good shape, even though I've opened and closed it so many times. But on here, you can see it's an underwater theme. Uh, we have the figure under underwater, obviously. He's shooting a squid, and not much to really see from the front other than the set info. The side shows some bubbles and a little bit of what the figure looks like inside. Kind of... And you know what also looks weird? It's not only tilted to one side, but it's also kind of in a diagonal function. Kind of, you know, eerie for this kind of container. On the back, it might be a little hard to see, but we have um, the figure itself again. How the squid launcher works. The Kanoka Club code for Bionicle.com at the time, C-A-R-3-0-8. And you didn't really have to purchase the set in order to get the code. You can read these off the packages in the store. So, theoretically, to get the codes, you don't need to buy the set. Which, in other sets, that usually was the case. But this one, they just put it right on the back. They also show you putting it in the package, the other barricade on the side, and just some general info. Now let's see if I can get this out of here decently. Okay, there's a leg. There's another leg. I see the head and body. All right, not too bad. Now there are instructions included with the set and unfortunately I do not have them present at the time of this review. Uh, the instructions don't really show much other than building the set, some of the other sets in the series. Um, I think at the time they also showed the Matoran because in the first wave, they didn't really show the Toa yet. They were more of a second wave uh, thing for the Bionicle sets of that year. So I'll just assemble this real quick. I think this is missing a squid. I might have to supplement it or at least just stick with the one squid. Okay, so I'll set this guy up and we'll get to reviewing him. So here we have Carapar. He is one of the six Baraki, and just to talk a little bit about the storyline, I won't talk a lot about this character, because I don't remember much about him, but I remember that the Baraki as a whole, um, they were these villains from centuries and centuries before the Bionicle story occurred, um, and in, in some way, you know, they were locked underwater, they were forced to live in the underwater conditions. The Mask of Life at this time and since then, was supposed to be their salvation in a way. It's supposed to be their, their way to escape underwater, to bring it back to the surface world and do the evil they want to do. Uh, I don't think they make it there, unfortunately. <laughs> well, fortunately, actually, because they're villains. So, this is a pretty large-looking figure. In comparison to some other ones, he might be a little on the short side, but he still has some pretty good details. I really like how they pull off the underwater look with him, especially with all the armor, really reminds me of a crab uh, or some other like hard shelled creature um, in a bunch of different ways. First one, we have the armor, just the color of them and the shape of them looks pretty nice. I really like how that looks. And it'd be pretty cool to remake this figure into some sort of crab. Uh, maybe I could do that at a later time. And you also have the giant pincers with this creature. So, let me see if I can hold him up this way. Oops. 
So you can see them held up this way. They are two pieces attached with a friction pin, and they can simply move back and forth. They can move past each other because there's nothing to stop them from moving in 360 um, degrees. They have some pretty large arms, a lot of gray on him, some pretty cool gray feet, which were previously used with the Paraka. No, uh, a little bit before the Paraka. Rakshi, thank you. And on his other hand, he just has the squid launcher. A lot of these Baraki, they would just have like one object, or they might have the same object on two hands. Um, so nothing special there. It's pretty cool though that his, his squid launcher is something convenient. It's just on his shoulder armor. And um, just to mention, these can move back and forth. They're not really intended much as a play feature, but they're flexible enough that you could make a pincing, pincer motion with them. So let's get to that figure feature. They are all ball joints as far as the limbs. I'm pretty sure by now you could figure that out. And it's really weird how these work. These are very flexible, very stretchy. Uh, it's part of how they're used, but it's always difficult to work these. There's never really an easy way to, to set these up. So you just have to pull back on the tail, and if it doesn't fall off, um, then you could just let go of it and see where it goes. It didn't really go anywhere. Uh, well, these are not the best suited launchers or squid uh, ammo. And the squid are actually, you know, living creatures that they just put into the launchers and, and fire them. Okay, he had a little bit of a bounce there, but nothing really fantastic. It wasn't really my favorite projectile from Bionicle. This is also a very flexible piece, just the entire launcher itself. Mainly keeps its shape, but it can twist a little bit. Um, and you could actually just take it off, try to hold it in your hand, and try to use it. Let me see if I can get any better without the figure attached. Ah, you see, sometimes if you pull it too far back, it doesn't exactly work. But he, he kind of keeps his head in. Kind of attaches with the eyes, or somewhere near the eyes. They have, like, little eyes on here if you look real close. Really nice texture. They got little gills. They got eyes on either side. They got the big mouth in the front. So, I don't know. Good for design, but not really good for play. I, you know. Okay, so he does a little flopping around. Not really much to it. So, I think it's an okay looking figure, despite the squid launcher. I think it, you know, mainly works well. I would like to see the rebuild of this, or maybe make one myself. I'm trying to make him into a crab. Not making him a bionicle villain or, you know, underwater creature, like, in the storyline. So thank you for watching this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time with more LEGO set reviews.